Why do some people succeed, whereas others fail? Is it because some people are faced with immensely arduous circumstances, or does it pertain to an individual's internal constitution and abilities? Perhaps a bit of both? I've contemplated these questions for quite some time, and a speech from this year's Oscars returned them to the forefront of my mind. I usually don't watch this event because I find it to be insufferable and a waste of time. But when your kitchen is in close proximity to the TV, then you're bound to see and hear what's going on. As I ate dinner, I saw one actor receive the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor and he made some intriguing remarks. Other than the usual expression of gratitude to the Academy and other people for helping him succeed, he briefly spoke to the broader audience where he mentioned that he spent some time in a refugee camp and has now won an Oscar. He utilized this remark about himself to ostensibly inspire others, and this was further cemented when he loudly proclaimed, quote, Keep your dreams alive. End quote. If these comments are true, then it's quite a remarkable accomplishment and yet another example of the rags to riches success story. His story, and the remarks he made, revived a long standing question in my mind about why some people are successful, whereas others are not. This question evidently doesn't imply becoming a Hollywood actor, but it certainly involves other careers and life circumstances. Why do certain people succeed at becoming doctors, lawyers, CEOs, and millionaires, or even with more modest pursuits like maintaining a successful relationship, marriage, raising a healthy family, and achieving personal life satisfaction, to name a few examples? Today's discussion intends to explore these questions and examine the reasons behind personal success and failure. In particular, two primary reasons will be explored. 1. Personal circumstances beyond your control like family members, where you're born, where you live, and the hardships you'll encounter during the course of your existence through no fault of your own. 2. Personal circumstances and decisions that you're ultimately responsible for. This naturally includes your mindset and conduct, and how these factors facilitate or inhibit success. Lastly, It'll be asserted that although worldly situations and hardships can hinder our progress, we are ultimately responsible for how these events impact us. This assertion can be fundamentally encapsulated with this particular question. If others can succeed with comparable situations and hardships, then why can't I? To begin, it would be extremely ignorant of me to not acknowledge the real-world impediments that many people face on their path towards success in whatever endeavor they pursue. This could be a physical or mental disability, or both, and they vary in degree, of course. Other factors could be immense poverty, dangerous political circumstances, persecution, discrimination, or facing hatred of several kinds. Here's an example. Perhaps someone is pursuing a professional athletic career, and this dream is abruptly dashed by a severe car accident that leaves them paralyzed from the waist down. Because of this accident, any hope of fulfilling that original dream has vanished, and so has any chance at success in terms of the original goal. An analogous situation occurred to someone I knew in high school. He was a remarkable athlete who played multiple sports, tennis and soccer primarily. Although we weren't friends, I knew about his activities through mutual friends and acquaintances. High school is a small world, and when something happens, word tends to spread quickly. Anyhow, I recall walking around school at the beginning of grade 12 where I saw him in a wheelchair. When I asked others what happened, they responded by saying that he was in a terrible biking accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. Naturally, I was shocked and I felt sorry for him because I also possessed athletic ambitions of a similar magnitude. I could only imagine the shock, disappointment, and sorrow he must have felt on realizing that his dreams were essentially finished. He would never get the chance to play professional soccer or tennis after that point, at least in the manner that he initially envisioned. What this story demonstrates is that for many people, this is their reality. They're unable to succeed in achieving what they desire because they're handicapped or disadvantaged in some manner, so much so that the disadvantage makes it nearly or entirely impossible to obtain their original goals. Someone doesn't necessarily need to be physically handicapped, but they could have a mental impairment instead or develop one at some point in their life. Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease are examples that instantly come to mind. Some people are more fortunate than others in the sense that they're able to experience a relatively normal life before tragedy befalls them, like the man in the above-mentioned story, whereas others aren't so lucky, 
because they're at a disadvantage from the very beginning. This could be suffering from a disability since birth, like cerebral palsy, having an absent parent or no parents, growing up in an inherently dangerous neighborhood, or spending their childhood in a politically unstable country. The list goes on and on, but the point is the same. There's no shortage of injurious and tragic circumstances that afflict people. Pain, sickness, and death strike everyone at some point, and these events don't care about status or age. They often strike without mercy and attempt to inflict as much suffering as possible. Knowing this, the question ostensibly shouldn't be, how do some succeed? It should actually be, how does anyone succeed or persevere at all? How can anyone gather sufficient courage to confront the immense pain and hardships associated with existence? I don't intend for this to be a doom and gloom, but these remarks are extremely valid and real in the minds of a vast number of people. Unfortunately for some, the detrimental experiences of existence and the accompanying dark thoughts are too much to bear. Why do some people fail and not succeed? You wouldn't be incorrect in claiming that, to a frequently indeterminate extent though, it was due to the tragedies of life and or they lacked favorable circumstances. It seems then that they were unable to weather the storm and to overcome the calamities that befell them. In many cases, this is true, like a terminal disease gradually breaking down the body until it can no longer function. The spirit and will to live are also simultaneously broken down by such events. Even so, it is in all despair. We can find hope even in situations where it appears pointless to persist. We can rise above arduous and insurmountable personal circumstances. If this weren't veritable, then none of us currently living would be here and our ancestors wouldn't have gotten so far. Others have surmounted hardships in the past. Additionally, there will be people in the present and future that continue this trend, as long as they retain the willpower to do so. This brings me to my next point. Besides worldly circumstances, individual differences and perspectives exist. Hardships and tragedies will impact everyone at some juncture. That's just the reality of life. However, the true question is how do we respond? Do we let these events destroy us? Or will we attempt to make the best of every situation and pursue satisfaction, despite the inevitable pain and suffering? I'll return to the story of my high school acquaintance. Although he can no longer walk, he continues to participate in sports. Last time I checked, he received a sports scholarship to a university in the United States for wheelchair tennis and continues to pursue athletics despite his paraplegia. This is truly inspirational and his example continuously reminds me of how your mindset is what makes or breaks you, rather than the actual circumstance itself. He could have chosen to resign himself to never participate in any sport ever again and continually lament over what could have been. Instead, he decided to make the best of things and achieve what he could despite his physical impairment. Worldly circumstances and hardships can be immensely painful. There's no dispute about that. Yet, whenever these events happen, we're faced with a crossroad. We can choose to suffer in perpetual despair because of these events, or we can attempt to overcome them. Choosing the latter option is what we should do not only to preserve happiness and satisfaction, but also to serve as an inspiration for others. Everyone is going through some kind of battle, and when you have others who can relate, then it makes the battle more bearable. Refusing to submit to life's hardships is also an act of defiance, because you're refusing to fall into the easy and ostensibly normal response to suffering, which is resignation and despair. If life is a test, then defying the odds and overcoming immense difficulties is likely a surefire way to pass the test. One thing I've found with willingly confronting obstacles over time is that while the intensity of hardships doesn't get any easier, your ability to withstand them does. Similar to leveling up your character in a video game, you become stronger and more durable. Challenges and enemies that were once difficult are now easy to defeat. They didn't get weaker, you just became stronger. So, you must become tougher in order to overcome what you're facing. In order to do that, you must willingly confront obstacles and essentially acclimatize yourself to the negative emotions that arise during this process. Fear, anxiety, stress, worry, and adrenaline all accompany this endeavor but their necessary components. They compel us to act, especially in situations that are dire. Nevertheless, they can be managed and utilized for extreme benefit. To succeed at anything, there has to be not only a plan but also the will to act. The ambition and motivation to strive for something despite impediment. This requires firm decisions, 
and often numerous small and seemingly inconsequential decisions, like choosing what you're going to eat or what time you'll wake up in the morning. Although these decisions are minor, they compound over time and can lead to either your success or failure. A professional athlete doesn't become great overnight. They become a champion through countless practice hours where they consistently sharpen their skills. Each practice session might not be constructive when taken in isolation, but over time that's when their progress becomes clear. When all the practice sessions and years of hard work are added together, then that's when the superstar abilities begin to emerge. In your own life, the same principle applies. Many steps, seemingly inconsequential, must be taken over a prolonged period of time in order to manifest some result. Your decisions and what you have control over will often lead to a particular result. While we sometimes find ourselves caught off guard by various events, there are also circumstances that arise due to our decisions. This is especially the case when these circumstances are poor or catastrophic. We often don't just find ourselves in a situation. It's more than likely that our decisions have led to, or at least substantially contributed to, such a result. Like ending up in a car crash after drinking too heavily. On the flip side, a successful romantic relationship doesn't happen overnight. Landing that dream job doesn't happen overnight. Creating that bustling business you desire doesn't happen overnight, etc. Whatever aspirations you have, there has to be a genuine willingness to pursue them and to confront the obstacles that will inevitably try to hinder your efforts. So, in conclusion, why do some succeed and others fail? Circumstances, tragedies, and hardships play a role, but so does individual mindset. Those who succeed work hard, but they also work smart. They seize on their opportunities and they learn from their mistakes, otherwise they wouldn't be able to progress. When they encounter setbacks and disappointments, they refuse to be destroyed by them. This doesn't imply the absence of emotion, but it does suggest that they experience these emotions and manage them through effective coping mechanisms. Ultimately, they make the best of detrimental situations and go from there. Perhaps some succeed because they have connections and a broad network. Indeed, but how do you go about making connections? By venturing out into the world and facing the fears associated with establishing a vibrant social network. There are many problems, but there are also solutions to these problems. Although they may be hidden, they can be found if you're willing to search for them. Maybe you'll need some luck, but you likely won't get lucky if you don't attempt to use your ingenuity to think outside the box in the search for answers. A remark that's often attributed to renowned golfers Arnold Palmer and Gary Player is, quote, It's funny, the more I practice, the luckier I get, end quote. Perhaps this insight reveals how luck, or fortune, favors those who are willing to try and put in the effort towards obtaining something of value. You can't dig up a treasure chest and receive the fortune or reward if you aren't willing to dig for it. Finally, remember that if others can succeed despite suffering comparable situations and afflictions, then why can't you? Why indeed? And that's something you must uncover for yourself.